I switched over to Olympus when the EM1 Mark II had an amazing video feature update that allowed incredible autofocus for video with that camera. I completely switched over because at the time there was nothing that was shooting 4K with a flip screen with good autofocus, great color science, and amazing IBIS. When the EM1 Mark III came out, I was working for a channel called Indie Mogul out in Hollywood, California, and I actually convinced all the shooters there to shoot on this EM1 Mark III. Now first, right out of the gate, we've got the same 20 megapixel megapixel count on the sensor but a brand new sensor and this new sensor is a stacked bsi quad moss and micro four thirds sensor i don't know what all that means but what i've been hearing in the reviews is that means that it's essentially like an 80 megapixel sensor crammed into 20 because it's like four sensors stacked together making one. It's giving us way better noise performance apparently and dynamic range. So having any type of advancement in dynamic range or iso is a win because these cameras were not the best. One of the major, major complaints about the older bodies from Olympus, in my opinion, was the screen resolution and especially the EVF resolution. Now, as a video shooter, I would rarely use the EVF, but when I did, it was pretty terrible, especially when you look at the competition. They've finally stepped it up and we now have like five times better resolution with an OLED panel as well. These used to be LCD panels. Well, not used to be. This is an LCD panel in the EM1. It's now got 5.76 million dots. So it's extremely sharp, 120 frames per second as you were looking through it. Next to no delay, I think it's like five millisecond or something like that. And as a video shooter, I do use the EVF quite a bit. That's what makes shooting on mirrorless so great compared to DSLRs is that this gives you an extra point of stabilization paired with the five axis uh, image stabilization, which is already incredible. And you can shoot with that thing and actually get super stable shots as if you're on a monopod or a gimbal. I'm primarily a video shooter and I know it would make sense to use the Panasonic GH5 or the upcoming GH6 if you're into micro four thirds, but I have to have decent and reliable autofocus and the Olympus cameras actually nail it because it's a phase detect autofocus system. With the new OM1 from OM Systems, we're getting 10 times the autofocus points compared to the original EM1. So I would imagine that's gonna make it even better. And based on the reviews that I saw with my good friends, Chris and Jordan from DP Review TV, it looks to be true, especially for photo. The autofocus seems to be performing extremely well with the eye focus with animals. You've got these crazy like AI smart autofocus modes that I will probably never use. But if you're somebody that takes pictures of trains, you can now make sure that your train is in focus. That just means for video shooters and as a YouTuber content creator, I think this camera is actually gonna be really amazing. You pair that with the incredible 10 to 25 f 1.7 lens from Panasonic, that gives you like an all-in-one system as a content creator, YouTuber type person. You get that super wide angle 20 millimeter that's not crazy super wide, but it is wide enough for these kind of like talking head type videos or the vloggy handheld stuff. There's a feature that I really, really wanted with the uh, EM1 Mark III and they didn't do the it. The EM1X had this um, and that is the mic input has to be in the right spot so that you can flip the screen around when you're filming and it doesn't interfere with the cable. I don't know why people don't think about this, but the EM1 Mark II and the EM1 Mark III didn't do this. The EM1X did, I guess, because it had much more room on it, but it looks to me like the OM1 finally has solved the mic input location issue. They put it a little bit higher than the flip screen, which means that you can flip it around and it won't interfere with the cable. 4K, 10 bit, up to 60 frames per second, and not only that, they fixed one of my biggest issues with these cameras, the EM1, the EM1X. The only like pro codec internally is the DCI 4K 24 frames per second feature. So if you're somebody that loves shooting 24 frames per second and you also love shooting cinema 4K, then no problem. I personally have switched to 30 frames per second, but the 30 frames per second mode in the EM1 goes down to a way smaller uh, bit rate. It's like going from 240 megabits per second in the 24 frame per second mode to like 100. And not only that, but the 24 frames per second mode in the DCI 4K with the high bit rate version is 24 frames per second like exact, which is what films are shot at. But when we're talking about video, 23.98 is what everything else shoots at. So 
if I were to mix and match this camera with other cameras, I have to basically either go to a lesser quality version with 2997 or 2398 with less bit rate. So it's a little softer. I found the image to be not as pleasing as the high bit rate option or switch all the other cameras to straight 24 frames per second, which is kind of weird. Like most people don't use that when it comes to video. So I haven't seen any reviewers talk about this, but that's one of the biggest features that I was hoping for is to have all flavors of different resolutions and frame rates giving us the maximum bit rate. And that seems to be the case. You can shoot 10 bit, 2398, 2997, 24, I would imagine 24 frames per second exactly. And it all the way goes up to 5997, 50p if you're in a PAL region. This is great. This is great news that basically makes it a normal camera which I'm happy about. <laughs> Must add, it is a 10-bit 420, not a 422 recording. Um, if you want even higher bit rate, the tiny crappy little micro HDMI port outputs a 4K 12-bit RAW ProRes that you can then record onto an Atomos. So you could do ProRes RAW out of it. The micro HDMI is a huge downer. I wish they would have upgraded that to a full-sized, but whatever. Next is continuous recording. Daggummit. Uh, finally, we get it with the OM-1 uh, from OM Systems. Continuous recording. These cameras had that stupid 29 at 9 seven or not, not, not nine, seven. I'm talking about frame rates, but, but like a 30 minute, 29 minute record limit. And then you have to start the recording over again. I don't know if these cameras were because of the laws in Europe or something like that. Like if a camera can record more than 30 minutes, it's considered a video camera, which then journalists can't take those cameras into certain settings. I think now that law isn't the case anymore. They've changed that. So for some reason, Canon still has this in place on their cameras that aren't cinema cameras. Um, but almost every company out there right now is doing continuous recording, especially Sony, all of their cameras, even the lower end ones have continuous shooting. So the fact that now I can just push record, do a two hour long golden hour podcast, which if you aren't already a subscriber or listener to the GH pod, go over to your podcast player of choice and listen uh, to my interviews with other YouTubers and uh, creators out there. I can actually use the OM-1 for that work and it'll be perfect. However, one of the issues I've had with these cameras in the past is it does a weird kind of like breaking up the clips thing into like chunks. So for long takes, even though it can record for 30 minutes and then it cuts off, it breaks that up into like four separate clips. Um, obviously, you know, it goes from one to the other and often I've, you know, you put them together and there's no issues, but I have had issues where like the audio kind of has like a blip or something or little kind of inconsistencies with where the clip cuts off and goes to the next one. So it remains to be seen if this continuous recording mode um, abolishes that kind of chopping it up into multiple clips things. So I actually sent a message to my friend Jordan Drake who has had some hands-on time with the OM-1. He tested this for me and he has confirmed that the OM-1 does not break up long clips into multiple segments, at least with his pre-release copy. It remains to be seen with the official production camera. I can't wait to test this because this is a huge deal to me. All in all, the OM-1 seems to be a pretty solid solution for people like myself who are doing content creation. However, it's coming up on the heels of the GH6, which will absolutely crush the OM-1 for video performance. It's supposed to do 5.7K recording um, and it will have a full-size HDMI. It will do all the things that I was complaining about. The one Achilles heel with the Panasonic cameras is of course the autofocus. The autofocus has always suffered. Uh, based on the rumors, it seems that the autofocus has been solved. And if that's true, um, and you're watching this in the future, I'm sure I'll have an update video on that. But I just don't anticipate the autofocus to be as good as what Olympus is doing because they're using phase detect, which is what Sony and Canon and Nikon, that's what Fuji, everybody except Panasonic has switched over to phase detect technology, which is so much more reliable and useful as a video shooter. So I'm still on the Olympus bandwagon. The menu system has also been updated with the OM system, uh, which is much needed. Um, I don't really mind the menus on these, but 
um, any improvement is going to be better. All around, I love these bodies. I love how they look. They kind of have a nice retro but modern vibe about them. And the new OM-1 especially has a nice modern look with the kind of more rounded, softer edges. Um, OM-1 comes from their film line. The original uh, Olympus film camera, the 35 millimeter, was called the OM-1. And it was a very tiny, compact uh, DSLR, not DSLR, SLR, um, that was just well regarded as one of the best compact SLRs on the market. So it's cool that OM Systems, who now own Olympus's camera division, um, are going with that name. I've been hearing rumors that apparently the name Olympus won't be on the cameras anymore going forward. This may be the last Olympus branded camera, which is interesting. Like, what are they going to put on the top here? Are they going to put OM Systems? That would be weird. Uh, or maybe just the model number on the top. I don't know. I don't see why they'd get rid of the Olympus logo on top. It's kind of iconic, um, but we'll see. So anyways, I love these cameras. If you want to see my review on the EM1 Mark II, um, I have a link in the description and in the card right here, as well as an Indie Mogul video that I shot 100% on the Olympus camera right here. I'm Dave Mays. This is my channel. I'm back. Subscribe. See you next time.